So in the previous discussion, we had a chance to look at um, uh, both an add and a load word. Um, what I want to do now is look at a branch instruction and see if we can learn how it's decoded. So let's assume that we have a branch instruction. It looks like this. What we do know by now is that we're going to always start with the mnemonic and a branch if not equals instruction. If I go and look at the green sheet um, and find, these are in alphabetical order, so a branch if not equal, there it is. And I want to decode this and put it into a 32-bit value. Um, and what it shows us is that the opcode is a 5. And then the two values that we're going to compare, we're going to compare two register values. Remember we have 32 registers, so RS and RT are like index, indices in two arrays. And so these values are 0 through 31, but RS and RT will select the two uh, registers that we wish to compare. And if those two registers aren't equal, um, then we're going to adjust the program counter. right? So that means we're actually going to jump into another area of memory. So the program counter is going to be equal to the program counter plus 4, right? which is the instruction, the subsequent instruction, since every instruction is 4 bytes apart, plus some branch address. And to help us kind of decipher what that means, your green sheet, as we look over here, not only does it give us the opcode and function, it has um, these notes here. So it says, look at note 4 to better understand how to interpret this information that we're looking at. And if you go down to note 4, it says branch address is encoded in this way. Um, and so this type of Verilog register transfer logic. Um, the way to read this is that it says that there is an immediate value. Let's go back up to the branch at the branch of not equal to instruction. Um, so there's branch address and the immediate value um, since it's an I type instruction um, is the 16 bits that would be right here. So this is kind of a variable essentially for what we see in the I-type format. Um, so we take those exact 16 bits and then the comma um, in this um, format, this comma is telling us to do concatenation. And so this says here that we're going to make two copies. So when you see uh, the single quote, two copies of binary zeros. Um, so we're going to take 16 bits and add two zeros to the right side. Um, and then that's and then on the left side, we're going to take our immediate value and we're going to take the most significant bit. Right. Remember, it's a 16-bit immediate value. We're going to take that most significant bit and make 14 copies of that. So we're going to have 14 copies of the most significant bit. So that's 14 bits. Plus these 16. 14 and 16 is 30. Plus these two over here. Um, that's 32 bits. So are we going to form a 32-bit address? Um, and we're going to form it from our immediate instruction, which is only 16 bits. So um, we need to see how that actually plays out. So um, let's take a look at a branch if not equals to instruction. Normally, we want to compare two register values. And if they're not equal, then maybe we want to jump to another label. Jumped and get out and skip everything else that would come next. If they are equal, then
then we would just kind of continue on downward all the way through. Um, so I'll leave this as exit and later on we'll take a look at what happens when we change it to top. So let's assemble this and let's see how this gets translated. So our branch if not equals is right here. It's line 18. Let's go back to our original one. Line 18. So we're good there. And so our branch, if not equals, um, bring this back. Line 18. So that's the source code, and that matches. So let's take a look at it with the magnifying glass. So there's branch, if not equals. A0, A1 to exit. And look at how it translates the label. It takes exit and it interprets it as a 6. And then it embeds the 6 as an immediate value. So let's see if we can make sense of the 6 that's there. Um, when we take a closer look at that instruction, um, notice that we're focused here on line 18 and when I go over here and I look at exit I want to jump to this so if I place my cursor here and if I go 1 2 3 4 5 and then the sixth instruction um, even though this is sitting here um, there's no difference between that and this right here. Um, exit will always reference, or the label will always reference the, in the instruction that follows, and that instruction can be on the same um, same level, same line, or not. Um, so our branch, if not equals instruction, all right, that's our our focus here. Our branch, if not equals instruction, if I go here and I count, I count starting from 20, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the sixth instruction. So when I assemble this and go back and look at the branch of not equals, notice that he embeds the 6. So what that 6 represents is the number of instructions, not from where you are, but the number of instructions from the subsequent, the instruction underneath. Um, and so if I run this code and let's assemble it, let's go all the way, oops, let's assemble it, step, step, I think there must be an error in there. Yeah, this is an invalid in, in address. So let's assemble it and try it again. If I can step all the way down to the branch if not equals. I want to try to understand what goes on with this. So the thing that's important here is that let's restart this and step through it. I want to talk for a moment about the PC or the program counter. The PC is not one of the the 32 that we can change. He's after that and we don't have a way of um, putting information into him directly. But when we want to do a jump or a branch, we're essentially changing the program counter which keeps track of where um, your program is at any given time. So right now as we step through I'm going to change this run speed to something quite slow. I'll say maybe um, one instruction a second and then I'll hit play and what you'll see is that we continue to step through at a slow speed one instruction every second and let's do that again I'll assemble this I'll hit play one instruction every second let's see where we are next next, 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 next. So in order for us to index through those instructions, 
we have to uh, go through memory and put a clock on each one of them. Well, you have to go through these memory, the, go through the memory at a certain speed, and that's based on the clock speed, the cycle speed of the CPU. So we're going through, and I've slowed it down so that we do one instruction every second. Um, that means that we're actually going into instruction memory and clocking out a 32-bit value every second. So think about memory as being an array, and every one second you're putting an index into that array. Program your program counter value is essentially the index into that array. So when you look over here at the program counter, when I take it up to the beginning, it's, since we're starting over here at address 0x004 with five zeros, um, you should see or 0x004, and that's what your program counter is. So your program counter has where you currently are at any given time. So when I assemble this and do the first step, now I'm at a 4, and notice that the program counter is at 4. Now when I do a single step, now I'm at 8, and your program counter is at 8. And if I do a single step, we're going to go to C, which is 12. And you'll see that the program counter goes to 12. Um, where have we moved? We haven't moved yet. We go to 8, and then we're going to go to 12. Um, and then you'll see that value placed over here. Um, so that's how the program counter works. He just keeps track of where you are at any given time within your program code. Um, and so when we want to do a branch, um, we're actually branching um, by modifying the program counter. So let's cut this off. And so when we say branch if not equal to, we're saying branch if not equal to, well, the 6 is not an address. Even though we've placed a label here, this label is really an offset that's going to be added to the program counter from this value. So a 6 here, um, since this program counter, let's say this program counter is at 20, I'll say, um, and then it goes up every 4, so 4, 8, 12, and so forth. Um, so this here indicates the number of instructions to jump to, um, and therefore we know how to modify the program counter. Um, ultimately, since our exit is six instructions from here one two three four five six we won't adjust the program counter by six we're going to adjust the program counter by six times four right so since each one of these takes up four bytes we're going to go four 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 and we're going to add six times four to um, this program counter, this address. So that's how um, we're going to use and interpret this information. Now, what that allows us to do um, is it, al it allows us to jump either backwards or forwards since we're, since we're just adding information to the program counter. So since label here is considered a 16-bit value, is it signed or unsigned? Well, we're going to take it and use it as a signed value. That means that we can jump over this range of values from negative 2 to the 15th to 2 to the positive 15 minus 1. So those are the values that can be added to the program counter. So we're not using absolute addresses. We're using relative 
addresses. If we just simply tried to use a true absolute address in that position, we would be severely limited as to how far we could jump. Um, and in fact, those values, 0 up to 65,535, that's not even in the, um, the range of addresses where um, code starts. Our code always starts over here at 0x, zero 04. Um, so it's um, so that that takes us to a different uh, different spot. Um, so we don't put in the exact address to which we wish to jump when we use a branch of not equal or even a BEQ or instructions like that. Uh, these branch instructions that are I type use not an absolute address but a relative addressing scheme. Um, and so that relative address, that's what's placed into that 16-bit space. And so the machine language encoding encodes a count of the number inf of instructions after the BNE instruction. So that's what we've seen. Um, this shows it again um, where we had the, in this case, I think this one is a branch on less than um, this one I think was a pseudo instruction so it was encoded as a set on less than and a branch of not equals um, so this one um, encodes if we look at this we're trying to get to the address called end and end if you look at where branch of not equals is here and if we do the count from no op, you'll see that there's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So from our BNE, there are seven instructions um, just from uh, from the no op that follows our BNE. So ignoring this one, but actually working with the true encoding of the instruction um, from our BNE, you go to the instruction following it, and there's seven afterwards. So this works um, where we just simply add to the program counter. Um, but we also want to think about what would happen um, if well, there are two things we want to think about. Number one is, if there's a 7 that's there, why don't we just use that 7 um, and, and instead of going to the instruction right after the BNE, why are we going to the instruction um, and, and adding to no op versus the BNE place value? And that has to do with the hardware. Um, we'll get a chance to um, look at how a program counter is implemented but the short answer is that um, there's a clock there's a, a cycle that's applied it's, um, to every CPU and it's just clocking through memory clocking instructions out um, and the way MIPS is set up um, as soon as it sends out sends a clock um, and it tries to present an address that's going to go into memory. It already takes its address that's been sent out and has the next address, plus four, already sitting there ready to be fired into um, the next instruction. So your program counter, as soon as an instruction is issued and we act on it, the program counter is already sitting at the next instruction. Um, so our branch, if not equals, or our branch instructions, um, as soon as we just run the instruction, our program counter is no longer at the value at which our instruction started. So if we get a chance, we'll try to um, do some work in Logisim so that you can get more of an intuitive feel for how program counters work and that's what this setup is for it's to help us 
and get some lab work, some experience with the program counter. So let's go back and do one additional thing. Um, branch if not equal to exit. I'm going to change this so that we branch to the top where this is our label here. So in this case, what I'm going to add to the program counter um, looks like it should be if we go to the next instruction and we start counting upward, we're going to have to add a negative value. So our immediate value is going to be assigned extended negative value. So we're going to add to it a negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it looks like we want to add a negative 11 um, to, uh, the pro to the program counter. So let's see if that is correct. Let's look at our branch if not equals. And over here we have a B and E. So it looks like we're going to branch and then the add to the program counter is some value that's here. And that may be the easiest way to translate this without taking pencil and paper is just to go ahead and um, have it represent not hexadecimal but the base 10. So it is indeed a negative 11 that we have here. So the branch if not equals, it's an I type instruction and what's stored here can be positive or negative. That positive or negative will be based on whatever this address is and we're going to add um, a number here. That number here will tell us how many instructions. Um, and don't forget that even though we go up negative 11 instructions from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, if you know this address, right, if I tell you it's at this address, can you tell me what address this guy jumps to? And you could, um, the address that this jumps to will be um, his address plus 4 and then if this is a negative 11 so what I'm going to do is take this address plus 4 and then they, and then what I'm going to add to it will be um, not 11 but 4 times 11 so it's 44 bytes that will be added so that will be the next thing we do is look at how you um, pick apart and decode um, the branch if not equals instruction and pull it into um, a 32-bit value.